today our topic is all about cooking and housework when you have axial SPA. My name is Zoe Clark, I'm an osteopath and I have AS myself as well. Please do comment with any questions you have and also any tips or tricks that you have because it can be really helpful when everyone shares different things that help for them. I'm just going to have a quick look, hopefully you can all see me because my camera has now disappeared. <laughs> So do let me know if you can see me. Ah, oh, it's come back again, great. Yeah, so do say hello if you're joining. What we'll do is um, I'll chat through a few of my tips and tricks and then I'll come back to the comments at the end and go through all of those to answer any questions. I have put the information about our helpline and also my email address in the video description. So if you have anything that I don't cover or you'd like any personalized exercises or advice, then do just get in contact with us. So we'll get started today all about housework and AS. So obviously one of the first things it's important to talk about is the fact that it's really essential to make sure that your AS is generally well controlled. So if you are finding activities difficult, it's worth speaking to your doctor, your rheumatologist or your physiotherapist, just to check whether there's anything that can be changed in your sort of management of your AS overall to make these things easier. If you have spoken to them, um, then hopefully everything is well managed and then we may come up with some ideas in this session that can help make things a little bit easier for you. So one of the biggest things that people describe to me when they are having difficulty with housework is often hoovering. That can be one of the biggest uh, difficulties. There are a number of different reasons for this. Either it can just be the amount of activity or it can be manoeuvring the hoover around. So it's important to shop around and look at different types of hoovers um, and it can depend on your own living situation, what type of flooring you have and the size of your house as well. Because um, obviously if something is battery operated, then sometimes for a larger house that's more difficult. You can also look at the actual manoeuvrability of the hoover, so do try them out. And obviously if you're able to visit friends and family and try out their devices as well, that can give you an idea of how it feels for you and how it affects your back and your symptoms before purchasing something. The battery operated um, hoovers can be really helpful, particularly the handheld ones. So you can find that by using those just gradually through the week and day to day, you can keep on top of things a bit more and mean that those larger hoovering tasks aren't needed quite as frequently. And really, a lot of the, a lot of the advice um, for any kind of housework does come down to pacing well and maintaining that balance between activities. So I will go through pacing in a little bit more detail towards the end of the video. Do you say hello if you're there watching? Just want to make sure that everyone can see. Um, I will, as I said, come back to the comments at the end and answer any questions then. So the next topic is washing and ironing. So again, this can be a really big job and depending on what your life is like as well, if you have uh, family members and children, you can be doing a lot of washing and ironing. So um, obviously other than enlisting as much help as you can, that can be one of the biggest benefits. But again, just breaking things down and pacing can be really helpful. So doing smaller loads of washing and ironing more frequently can be a little bit easier so that then you're doing smaller amounts but often rather than doing one big activity and then finding that you feel more of flare up afterwards and then you take some time to recover afterwards. So doing a little bit each day or every couple of days can be an easier way to pace your activity. There are things you can do as well in terms of helping if you find it difficult reaching in and out of machines. So if you find bending down difficult you can either organise it so the machine is actually a bit higher up so you're not having to bend down as much or you can use devices such as grabbing devices to help you pull things out straight into a basket. And you can also get baskets with a handle and wheels so that once you've pulled the items out into the basket, you can just wheel them through to wherever you do the drying or the ironing as well. So it just limits the amount of, sort of bending and twisting that you're doing if you do find that that flares things up. And then in terms of ironing, making sure that your setup is correct is the best thing to do first of all. So whenever you're ironing, you want the ironing board at a round waist height so it's a comfortable height. So when you're using the iron, you want your shoulders to be down and nice and relaxed. So you're not having, a, having the ironing board too high up and, and lifting your shoulders up. But similarly, if the ironing board's too low, you're going to be stooping over it. So you want to keep a nice upright position as you do it. You can then also set up where you're putting the things ready to iron and then once you've ironed them, where you place them afterwards. So if you do it in an area either where you've got a table, or you've got the sofa nearby, so you can put the basket of washing again around waist height. So although you're moving to it and lifting, you're not having to bend down repeatedly. And then you can have something of a similar height to then put the items on afterwards. 
it's, it is important as well to say that some of these activities can actually be used as a bit of exercise and as a way to actually get your body moving. So if you do find that those movements of reaching down and bending are, are good for you and don't tend to trigger a flare up, then actually you can think of your housework and, and your activities like this as a way of doing an exercise. So you may not have had time to do your physio exercises that morning, but then if you are doing lots of bending and twisting and stretching, you're going to be getting some of that movement in through day-to-day -day activities anyway, which is always helpful. And then finally, in terms of ironing as well, obviously making sure that you have as many items that don't need ironing, so particular materials, and then on the ironing board cover itself, having a reflective cover so that you're not having to iron both sides as well can be really helpful. And then in terms of dusting and cleaning, so again, similarly to hoovering, it's helpful if you do this little and often, so you're keeping on top of things rather than letting things build up and having a lot to do all in one go. Although I know that day-to-day -day life does mean sometimes that you can't do it as you go and you do end up having a lot all to do at once. Other than asking friends and family for help or hiring a cleaner, um, using different tools can be really helpful. So as I said, with a grabbing tool, you can use a similar thing to help reach hard to reach places using a duster. You can also have a long handled duster and also mops that have long handles where you then attach a, uh, an actual sort of sheet that you can reuse rather than having a mop that you're having to wring out, which can be a little bit more physical. And then in terms of um, to toilet cleaning as well, you can use dropping cleaners um, so that you're not having to scrub the toilet as much. And you can also get the ones which clip onto the side of the toilet so that each time the toilet's flushed, it's running the cleaner through so you're not having to do that scrubbing as frequently. And then in terms of food shopping, so moving on away from the housework and into the, the cooking and eating side of things. Um, so when you are shopping and out shopping, definitely ask for help if you need any help reaching for things on the shelf. And also when you're at the checkouts, if you need any assistance with bag packing, then definitely ask uh, the checkout person or another colleague if they can help with that. And when you are packing the bags, make sure that you put things in so the weight is evenly distributed. So you've not got one bag of really heavy things and one bag of really light things. Try to spread them out. And it can also be helpful just to half fill the bags rather than fill them all the way up and then have lots of really heavy bags. If they're half filled, so they're a little bit lighter, you can then have take more than one trip to get them into the car and out of the car. And then it just helps reduce the strain on you. I know the temptation is just to grab all the bags all at once and try and do it all in one go, but then you are increasing your risk of pulling something, straining something, or just triggering a bit of a flare up. So it's well worth just taking a couple more trips and pacing yourself to make that a little bit easier. And then of course, there are lots of things that you can buy to actually help make cooking a lot easier. So you can buy pre-prepared vegetables and tinned vegetables as well. So you're not having to do as much prep work or as much chopping. Frozen veg can be really helpful too, so do look at all the different options there, especially if you are having a bit of a flare up, it can be really helpful just to have something that you can go to really easily and not have to do too much prep. And certainly, certainly eating well is going to help with your overall energy too. And then in terms of your cooking, so some people find that planning their meals ahead of time can be really helpful. So you can look at the week ahead and particularly look at your schedule, how busy things are, and see if there are any days where maybe having something prepared the day before is going to be helpful for you. And on the better days when you have more energy and you're in less pain, it can be helpful when you're cooking to cook an extra portion or two that you can keep in the fridge or in the freezer. So if there's a day when you have a bit of a flare up, and you've not got the energy to do the cooking, you've got something healthy and nutritious and something that's going to give you energy, but doesn't require energy to make. So you can just pop it in the oven or the microwave ready to go. And then in terms of actual cooking, you can plan rests while you are cooking. So you can use the time when things are simmering, when things are frying, or you've put something in the oven to actually go and sit and have a rest. Or you can use a chair while you are working. So you can sit at a bar stool at the countertop, or you can use something like a wheeled walker that converts into a seat. So you can have those rest breaks and those pauses as you go as needed. And then again, if you have things that don't need too much prep time, that can be really helpful. Or you can enlist friends and family to help with that. So getting things prepped earlier in the day if someone's visiting, so that then in the evening you just have to put it all together. Or use something like a slow cooker that you can just bung everything all together and then you don't really have to do much to it. It is important to note as well that sometimes working on the stovetop can be easier 
rather than having to lift something in and out of the oven if you do find lifting difficult. And obviously to make that safe, you can always use things like a wheeled tray or a wheeled worktop so that you're not having to lift things too far. You can move them onto the wheeled item and then you can push that to wherever you're taking it, like the oven, so that it just takes a little bit of strain off you, particularly when things are hot. Obviously you want to make sure things are as safe as possible. So do let me know your questions. I can't see any comments coming up at the moment. So hopefully um, we don't have too many com comments coming through that I'm missing, but do pop a post on there if you want to say hello. Um, and then continuing on with cooking, so you can use things like, um, you can get scissors to help you use with, with chopping if you have any hand or wrist pain. You can also get devices that help you with opening jars as well. So again, to protect your hands and wrists. And then as well with chopping, if you don't get the pre pre-chopped veg, you can always use things like a food processor or blender to help chop and just take the pressure off and then it's going to take less energy as well. And then in terms of going back to lifting as well, obviously other than asking for help um, from people and using the wheeled walker, you can also use things like a kettle tipper, so it's a, a frame that the kettle will sit on, so then when you go to tip it you're just tilting the kettle rather than having to lift it and hold it, which can be helpful if you've got shoulder or upper back pain. And also using things like um, two handle saucepans so that you can use both arms and spread the weight evenly rather than having to use one handle and holding it there. And then you can also try and have thicker grips on handles as well or even use disposable or tins so that you can reduce the amount of washing up and the amount of lifting and carrying you're doing as well. And then in terms of pacing, as I said, that can be one of the biggest things to actually help manage things like housework and cooking. So I have done a whole video on pacing before and I've linked to our My S My Life page where we've got our guide to fatigue and also um, the blog post I previously did as well, all about fatigue. So that contains a more detailed look at pacing. But ultimately pacing is a way of managing your activity levels so you're not getting um, a, a lots of peaks and troughs with your energy. So the temptation can be when we're feeling good that we go and do something that's a really high energy activity but then you end up having to rest and recover afterwards for a long period of time. Gradually over time, if you continue that cycle of getting those peaks and troughs, you're going to actually end up with less energy overall, and more prone to flare ups as well. If we manage our energy level better, so we're not getting as many fluctuations and we're pacing our activities, then we're able to gradually increase our energy and increase our stamina over time as well. So a way that we can do this included in the guide um, to fatigue is an activity diary. So it looks at the week um, as a whole and it's broken down into hour sessions and then you can colour code those. You can record when you've had a low energy activity or a high energy activity and any rest periods as well. So that actually after a couple of weeks of doing that you can look at your schedule and look at how you've spent your time and see if there are any ways that you can help pace things a little better. So if you do find that you spend a lot of time doing an activity and then resting afterwards, you may find that actually if you broke that activity down into smaller tasks and pop those small rest breaks in in between, you're then able to do a little bit for longer, but without causing any more symptoms or any flare ups as well. So it's well worth just experimenting with it, record it and just see if you notice any changes over time as well. And then, as I said earlier, you can use housework and cooking and things as a workout too. So do speak to your physiotherapist or do get in touch with myself as well. If there are any activities or movements that you're finding difficult, so commonly it's something like reaching down to the floor or reaching up towards the ceiling, but you can actually look at doing these activities. If you build them up gradually, they can become a bit of an exercise and a bit of a workout to help you actually improve your ability to do those over time. And I know one of our great trustees, Gillian, Gillian Eames, has um, thought of a really great way of doing this. So she has her washing line test. So when she goes to hang out the washing and she's reaching up, she can actually test how easy that is and how, how difficult it feels. And then that helps her see how her exercises are going. And if she's reaching up and finding that actually it's a bit more difficult that day, she knows to increase her exercises a little bit. And then on days when it feels easier, she knows that she's on track as well. So there's little things like that that you can do just to test how things are feeling and also alter them as you go on as well. So do think about any other activities and let us know in the comments if there are any activities that you think you could do this with um, and we'll be happy to share them. So I've come to the end of all the advice that I'll be giving today. Um, I still can't see any comments coming up so I'm hoping it's just that no one's commented there 
Um, but if there are comments popping up that I can't see, I'll come back and I'll answer them um, in the comment box later on. Uh, and as I said, you can give us a call on the helpline or send me an email, zoe at nas.co.uk, if you'd like to have a chat about any personalised advice as well. So, um, yeah, let me know if there are any questions. And in the meantime, next week, or our next session is on the 12th of August at 1pm with Professor Carl Gaffney, and he'll be talking all about the medical management of Axo SPA as well. So we're really looking forward to that, really pleased that he'll be joining us for that. So do let us know in advance if you have any particular questions or topics you'd like him to cover. And as always, he'll be answering questions um, live as well. So do let us know. So thank you everyone for joining and we'll upload the video with the blog post all to the My AS My Life page as soon as possible and pop it on YouTube as well. So you can come back and watch this at any point. Um, and we'll add in any tips and tricks that you may have shared that we've not thought of so far and pop them in the blog post. So thank you for joining and hopefully see lots of you next week. <laughs>